and uh, welcome to um, this interview we are doing with um, Zane Putnia, um, who is a PhD student at the University of Technology in Brandenburg. And she is um, doing some research on, well, not the, just the time machine organization, but more specifically on our local time machine um, project network with a specific focus on um, digital cultural heritage. And we're quite thrilled and excited that uh, you've taken an interest in what we're doing. And um, yes, we would like to very much support uh, your endeavors, your research. And um, um, as you have a, um, a questionnaire, which you would like to share with our community, we thought we'd do this interview, um, give you the opportunity to explain a little bit um, yeah, about your thesis, about your research questions, and maybe also go back into, um, into the past of your uh, research quest. And maybe we can start out by you telling us a little bit of what was your starting point? How did you, how did you take an interest in into these local time machine projects? Thanks, Kirsten, so much for the introduction and for organizing this interview. I appreciate the support from the whole Time Machine office greatly, especially shout out to uh, Ilaria Manzini, the local Time Machine uh, uh, manager, who's been incredibly supportive. Over the last almost a year now, we've been in touch. So <laughs> thank you for, for the patience and, and staying with me. Yeah, um, I actually, uh, I have my roots in art history. Um, and then, but I was always called a little bit of a philosophical art historian, which I couldn't understand if it's a good thing or a bad thing at the time. Uh, uh, but then, yeah, I, I went into the world of theory with my master's program, um, which was about media, art and performance studies. And when I was there, it was actually in Utrecht uh, on a university, there was the Digital Humanities Conference in 2019. And I had uh, done already a couple of courses, uh, which were not really related to what I was supposed to study. Uh, in relation to digital humanities, because I just found the whole field as a complete uh, re revelation at the time. It somehow called me back to my art historian roots and said, hey, this is, uh, you can do so many interesting, incredibly interesting things that could have never been possible uh, with uh, different media. So um, that was that, and that was 2019. And in the conference, I was volunteering and I saw the booklet of the freshly published booklet, I think in 2019 of the Time Machine organization. And if I thought that digital humanities for me is a revelation, the Time Machine organization was a revolution, <laughs> absolutely, because it was a, I've also never experienced or seen in the humanities such a collaborative, large scale uh, endeavor at all. So I was blown away, but uh, yeah. So, and then I finished my master's uh, and while finishing my master's, I was thinking I have to do something with this. This is too interesting to be. <laughs> I, yeah, um, so that was that. Um, um, and I was starting to develop my idea. And the first actual plan was to, and so this was 2019 um, and early uh, 2020. And there were 22 projects at the time uh, listed as the local time machine projects. And uh, I was thinking, great, it's a relatively small number. I can work with this. I could make a practical on conceptual toolbox, a little bit map what kind of projects are there on the web page. And then I found this incredibly interesting concept from a literary and media uh, and memory studies scholar, Astrid Erl, uh, that's called the traveling memories uh, concept, um, where she kind of structurally analyzes how memories travel uh, through actually five different categories. Um, there's so for, for a story uh, to remain relevant throughout history, it has to move through all these incredibly complex things. And I think her most famous probably example is the Odyssey uh, that at first is a, is a narrative, it's an oral history, but then it had to be written down and who was writing it down. And then it had to be uh, yeah, through different media and different uh, social constructions, it had to be carried onwards. And now I think we are in a quite a big breaking moment from, uh, well, it's not just me who's saying this, obviously, uh, that from, from 
print to digital media and the concept I think illustrates it really nicely. So that was the original idea, but since I just looked up again, counted the number of projects <laughs> of local time machines, there's 128 by now. Uh, so, and it's growing exponentially, which I find is great, of course, but it's, uh, it's interesting to also look at this kind of very quickly developing organism, uh, but the idea of mapping uh, practically what's going on there, I have given it up because it wouldn't be nor doable, nor it, it would make sense because it's also what you are actually internally doing now as well, which is, uh, yeah. Uh, but then instead, I decided to look a little bit more at the concept of digital cultural heritage through the perspective. So have the or overarching sort of uh, focus on, on the concept itself and then look at what kind of players are um, with, with, within the playing field and then ground the reason why I'm looking at the time machine organization within the, uh, the, the field of digital cultural heritage. Um, and maybe include a little bit of a longitudinal study elements into it as well, mapping a little bit how it's actually developing while I'm still working on it. Um, so that also the results that I will have will not be definitive, probably in any way, just a sketch. But then, and yeah, so more from the practical first uh, step, I'm moving more and more into the conceptual side of things. Um, uh, and I would definitely still do the traveling memory analysis um, and then the, the kind of added uh, section, the big reason why is this all important as well. I have this still, might change, but, <laughs> but I have this uh, quite uh, ambitious idea to have a look from a very interdisciplinary point of view, what does this digital culture heritage concept and the physical um, uh, yeah, evidence, the local time machine projects, what will it possibly do to fields like history or media and uh, memory studies, as well as heritage studies, which is a critical heritage studies, especially, which is a, also a, a rising new field. So, and then there's something um, how we as time machine community can um, support your research and you have developed this um, questionnaire and maybe you can tell us a bit about this questionnaire um, what your intentions are, um, just, you know, the frameworks of it. Yeah, um, well, there are, yeah. So the main focus the, would be then the traveling memory concept. That's, that's my main pun punching point, so to say, but I come in with it uh, just generally kindly um, um, asking a little bit more uh, around details, for example, shortly uh, stating the research objective of the of the project again. But I also found it really interesting since I'm looking at the concept of digital culture heritage, I found it really interesting to map a little bit where the, the project see themselves in which academic um, spheres themselves, if they even see themselves as digital culture heritage projects. I won't say anything about that anymore to not influence the possible results of the questionnaire. Um, uh, but yeah, and then the really in-depth and maybe possibly also confusing part of the questionnaire is the traveling memory concept. Um, and now I'm gonna, it basically breaks down to five dimensions. There's the carriers, the people who uh, told the story of the, uh, the kind of the analog uh, data source, who was the one who was telling the story then. And then who is the person who's telling the story now? Uh, that's the first one. And then there's the media. So what kind of media were used? Was it photographs? Was it maps? Was it um, cadasters? Was it, um, yeah, archeological information? And what kind of medium is it now? Uh, then the third one is um, uh, practices of access. How do you experience this? Do you have to only read the analog? You used to have to, for example, only read the analog document, but now you can see it as a, in a complex interface and scroll around and compare uh, maps with pictures and so on and so forth. That's the third one. And then there's the content, the actual story that appears uh, in, the, in the source material and then in the digital version, which there are might be very strong overlaps, of course, but it might significantly alter, differ also in the digital version. And then lastly, the symbols and the, and the formats that are used. So 
Um, yeah, and in and, and older uh, documents, it's probably words and uh, maps, but in the newer digital versions, it might be very complex visual um, information, information visualization uh, field is also growing now, I think, uh, very greatly so. Um, and the, and then I guess the confusing part from 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 the user's perspective, who is who is um, uh, do, doing the questionnaire, is uh, it, it is a broad uh, question. And I've tried to I went actually through all the projects and I tried to uh, come up with possible answers to all of them. Um, and yeah, well, the main main goal of of the questionnaire and why I wanted why I found it would be great if I had the input from the actual project partners would be to see um, if I've if I've come up with the things that they think that are actually what's what's happening and to to roughly sketch out the the, the terrain so to say uh, to to understand what's going on and it's that, that because it is a very preliminary phase it probably won't be um, very precise and that's why it might also be kind of confusing for for the for the person who's filling it out but it does give me quite well i look at the a couple of the results that i have it does me give me a very good idea already um, what's the, what's the playing field for then to be to be able to go into a case study uh, yeah semi-structured interview um, uh, format to then really go deep into the projects um, uh, and, and, and dig deep, but yeah, the the, fo the focus of the questionnaire is to kind of have a have a bird's eye view on on all of these uh, aspects. Okay, yeah. um, so I um, I'm quite sure that uh, that uh, our time machine community will be happy to to provide you with information and input to you know so you can work further and. Um, um, progress into the next steps of your um, research, um, um, yeah, overall research question. Um, so the plan is after the questionnaire that you're going to do, you said semi-structural interviews with specific uh, local time machine projects. Yeah, that is Would the last thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that was also the last question of the of the questionnaire is, would you be willing to have an interview at the end? So I will see. Uh, coming uh, out, out of the data there, uh, yeah, uh, then yeah, still have to look at what, 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 what could be the number and how many people would be willing to do it. But yeah, I think, uh, and, and as for why, uh, it would be great also for you to fill out the survey questionnaire, is that it is, uh, as, as I said in the beginning, it is this massive slide uh, currently happening from, from heritage to digital cultural heritage. And I know that in other fields, like in literary studies, people have tried to pin this down a little bit. Um, um, yeah, how, how does how does reading change from from analog to digital uh, for formats? How how does how does the experience change, and what are the implications? And um, well, to the best of my knowledge, I hope I'm. I'm not offending anyone if anybody has done this already, but <laughs> I, I, I couldn't find yet uh, some, something that would map quite uh, yeah, closely. How does this uh, transition happen? Uh, so I think we really, I, I mean, historical breaks always are actually quite boring and slow because you don't, when you live in them, you don't really see it. But, but I really quite believe that we are in this uh, definitive moment of time. Yeah, and it might be also interesting to see how your pre the your project stands uh, against other projects. Maybe there's some similarities, maybe maybe not. And also, yeah, it's a little bit of shedding light to your project as well. Uh, Absolutely, I, hope I would do them justice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. All right, um, excellent. Um, we will share uh, the link to your questionnaire in the description of the video, um, just to make sure everybody knows where to go. Um, and um, we'll keep our community posted on your progress. Um, I'm sure, um, yeah, there will be, as you said, it will be a great benefit also for our community to see, you know, what your final 
um, evaluation or thesis is going to be like um, and give us some insight into, as you said, to see where we stand. Um, so this sounds like a very, very interesting project and I'm very happy that we get to support you um, as good as we can. And let us know if, you know, if there's any other opportunity where we can um, lend you a hand. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to say? Any last words uh, for this session? Or Just thanks to you again. And uh, yeah, to all the projects as well, uh, being part of the local type machine network. I really, I'm very impressed with all the work that's being done. Um, I hope to be uh, in the field in the long run and can just wish uh, the best of luck uh, going forward. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, Zana, thank you very much for taking the time and uh, running us uh, through your uh, conceptual framework. And um, I strongly uh, encourage and invite our Time Machine community to um, fill out your questionnaire. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be a big response um, and you'll get, you'll get plenty of information to work with. Thanks um, so much. <laughs> all right, then um, let's leave it at that. And um, thanks once again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank